Out of all the noble families in the series, House Targaryen has had their family tree flesh out the most by George Martin. They formed and ruled over the Seven Kingdoms for hundreds of years. Plus, they can control dragon, so it's no surprise that this family gets all the attention when it comes to the lore. From the time they lived in Valyria, the Targaryens have had this tradition of incestuous marriages, so it isn't very common that you'll find them marrying into other families. The Targaryens had dragons, so they didn't need to worry about forming alliances through marriages, and keeping their bloodline as pure as possible seems to be vital for controlling their bonded beasts. But once in a while, there wouldn't be an available male or female, and once the dragons went extinct, alliances would have to start being made. In House Valerion's case, they had been very close to the Targaryens since they flew over to Westeros. Both families originate from Valeria, although the Valerions were never a ruling family and could not control dragons. House Valerion made their home on the island Driftmark off the western coast of Westeros, and the Targaryens chose a smaller island Dragonstone sometime later on. Aegon the Conqueror's mother was a Valerion, and there have been a lot of marriages between these two families. The Valerions are known for their abilities on sea with their ships, but many carried enough dragon blood to fly atop of a Targaryen dragon and bond with it. Aegon's father also seems to have been with other women. Oris Baratheon, the founder of House Baratheon, was his bastard son, and the only person Aegon was close with and fully trusted. Many generations later, House Baratheon would get some more blood of the dragon in their family line. Robert Stannis and Renly's grandfather married Rael Targaryen. It may be pretty diluted, but Selyse and Robert's bastards could possibly have a bond with and control one of Daenerys' dragons in the books, but that'll be pretty unlikely. That's Jon's and Bran's role in the final battle. There are a ton of Targaryen bastards and descendants of those bastards all around this fictional world. On Dragonstone, the bastards were called Dragon Seeds. During the Targaryen Civil War that happened over 150 years ago, called the Dance of Dragons, before the start of the series, all the people claiming to be Dragon Seed were offered lands and lordship if they were able to bond with one of the few riderless dragons on this island. Many died, but some were able to tame a dragon. The Deadly War had battles with dragons going against other dragons, so none of the dragon seed who tamed the dragon were able to form a family and house of their own by the end of it. Aegon the Conqueror's grandson, King Jaehaerys, had a very troublesome daughter named Sarah, who could not be controlled. Instead of accepting her punishment for acting out, the teenage princess ran off to Essos to work at a brothel. She would live in Essos for the rest of her life and have at least three sons. Sarah first stayed at Lys and later moved to Volantis, where she would settle. So it's possible this city is filled with dragon seeds. Three of her sons were even brave enough to travel to Westeros to claim the Iron Throne when the line of succession was in dispute. Of course, they were passed over. The most renowned Targaryen bastards would have to be the Great Bastards. Aegon IV, nicknamed Unworthy, was a horrible king who did something no other king would ever think of. He legitimized all 14 of his bastards, even though he had a capable heir of his own. His firstborn bastard, and clearly his favorite child, Daemon, would form his own house called House Blackfyre named after the Valyrian steel sword Blackfire that is customarily passed down to the firstborn son, which his daemon wasn't. House Blackfire would rebel against the Iron Throne in five separate occasions. This family may have gone extinct in the male line, but it does seem like the female line continued somewhere in Essos, which led to a lot of fans to try and speculate which character in the current story is a Blackfire descendant. A Targaryen princess named Elena, who lived around the same time as Aegon the Unworthy, is responsible for a couple houses having some blood of the dragon. She had seven children with three different men. The first man she chose out of love was her cousin, Alan Valerion. He was actually one of the dragon seed bastards, but he had both Targaryen and Valerian lineage. While his brother died fighting as a dragon rider, he was never able to tame a dragon, only received burns across his body trying. Together with her cousin Alan, Alina had two bastard children, twins, John and Jane. Bastards born in the Crownlands are given the last name of Waters. John Waters would become a skilled and well-known knight, he would marry and have a legitimate child, who had a similar reputation as his father. Instead of carrying on the bastard name of Waters, the unnamed son changed his family name to Longwaters, founding a house of his own. Not much else is known about House Longwaters, other than the blood of the dragon is in its founder, and that it's a very minor house in the Crownlands. Olena may have loved Ellen Valerion, but she would never marry him. He was already married to another Targaryen princess, and would eventually get lost at sea in one of his voyages. Alina would marry the very rich but old Ossifer Plum. This marriage wouldn't last past the wedding night. The old Ossifer Plum died during the bedding, but was able to get Alina pregnant before his death. She would name their son Viserys Plum. House Plum is actually an ancient house from the Western Lands, with first man descent. In the current story, a character named Ben Plum, nicknamed Brown Ben Plum, is one of the sellswords who are serving Daenerys. 
It seems like that drop of dragon's blood he has in him that his family got around 125 years ago has paid off. When Daenerys' dragons, Rhaegal and Viserion, were chained up in Marine, Brown Ben was the only one who didn't fear them. He was fond of them, and they were fond of him. After Ostafer's unexpected death, Elena would marry someone named Ronald Penrose. House Penrose is a major house in the Stormlands. Elena would have four children with Ronald. None of them have been mentioned to be very important, but maybe some backstory will come in future books, who knows. With her last batch of offspring, Elena was up to seven children. Since the number seven is wholly in the dominant religion of Westeros, she decided she was done having children. Elena would also outlive Ronald Penrose, and would get married one more time. Michael Manwoody would be up next. House Manwoody is a house from Dorne. She married him out of love instead of duty. Since she already decided that she would not have any more children, House Manwoody wouldn't receive any blood of the dragon in their line. Marrying into a Dorne's family was a big deal during this time. Aegon the Conqueror was never able to conquer Dorne when uniting the Seven Kingdoms. It wouldn't be until 200 years after Aegon, so around 100 years before the start of the story, that Dorne would join the Seven Kingdoms. The Targaryens have tried over and over with fire and blood to take over, but the Martells and Dorne would never bend the knee. They only joined through marriages between the Targaryens and Martells. An overly religious king named Baelor the Blessed walked barefoot to Dorne to negotiate peace. He was successful, and Baelor's cousin Darren would marry Mariah Martell, and later the Prince of Dorne, Marin Martell, married the Princess Daenerys Targaryen. It would be through Daenerys, no, not the Daenerys in the current story, but one a hundred years in the past, that House Martell would obtain some blood of the dragon. In the last book, a character named Quentin Martell, who was Doran Martell's eldest son, believed he had enough Targaryen blood in him to tame one of Daddy's dragons. So he entered the dragon pit in Marine and was lit up with dragon fire. He ended up dying a slow and painful death from his burns. So I guess he had too much Martell blood flowing through him that diluted all the magic. Before the Martell and Targaryen marriages, a princess named Reyna married Garment Hightower. House Hightower is one of the most powerful houses in the Seven Kingdoms, and one of the richest, ruling over the ancient Old Town in the Reach. Together, they had six unnamed daughters. So it was unclear if House Hightower passed down any blood of the dragon, but it's safe to say at least some of these six daughters of high birth married into other noble families and passed on their genes. Before Garment, Reyna was married to Carwin Corbray, but he died before having any children with her. So House Corbray of the Vale missed out on some dragon blood. House Aaron also missed out early into the uniting of the Seven Kingdoms. Princess Dela married an Aaron Lord, but only had one daughter before dying of a childbirth. Their daughter, Ama Aaron, would marry back into the Targaryen family, so their magical blood just stayed within the family. Since we only know of one of the great bastard's offspring, there's definitely a lot more dragon seed out there. If you guys have any theorized characters with Targaryen lineage, let's hear it in the comments. And no, and no, Tyrion is not half Targaryen. Thanks for watching, guys.